The Hired Hand Do. You can't talk about high scores in Spelunky without also mentioning it. It has a long and complicated history in the Spelunky community, and not all of its history was positive. Ever since its discovery, the community recognized how powerful it was and promptly banned it from use in the community for fear that it would destroy the meta of Spelunky score running, making it one of only three exploits to have ever been banned. But as the secrets of the render dupe were being unearthed in the latter half of 2018, the community began to see the hired hand dupe in a different light and unbanned it, and it predictably became one of the most influential glitches ever discovered in the community. So what is the hired hand dupe? And why was it considered to be so powerful that it needed to be banned? Welcome to the Spelunker's Guide, where we break down bugs and glitches in the indie masterpiece Spelunky, and I'm Contramuffin. Let's get started. The hired hand dupe falls into a category of exploits called the collision dupe. Every exploit within this category has been known since 2016, making these exploits some of the oldest exploits known to the community. The hired hand dupe in particular is so old that there is no clear record of its discovery, so its discoverer, as well as the date of its discovery, remains a mystery. However, what is known is that it was discovered around 2014, and after some initial testing by Hectic and Milkman, Moss Rankings banned the Hired Hand dupe, citing that its potential for destroying the score run meta and deprecating all other score runs is so high that it would be unreasonable to allow its use. But why was it so powerful? To understand, we need to talk about Collision Dupes, the category of exploits that the Hired Hand dupe falls under. A collision dupe is defined as any duplication glitch or exploit which occurs because of multiple simultaneous collisions occurring to a single object. What does that mean? Well, whenever an item is destroyed, it's not actually destroyed right away. Instead, it's marked for deletion and all items which are marked for deletion are deleted at a convenient point in time at the end of each frame, which is 1 60th of a second. Or at least, it's supposed to. The render dupe prevents some items from being deleted, but that's outside the scope of this video. Like the deletion code, the part of the game which checks for collision also happens on each frame. However, the collisions are run before the deletion occurs. That means that all collisions are calculated before any item is deleted. This causes an issue, because that means that collisions can still occur to an object even when, according to common sense, that object should have been destroyed. Here's an example. This is an arrow. The behavior of an arrow is simple. When it hits an enemy, the arrow becomes an arrow shaft and the enemy takes damage. However, if we take a closer look, it's not quite that simple because the arrow doesn't actually become the arrow shaft. When a collision is detected between the arrow and the enemy, the collision code will spawn the arrow shaft then mark the arrow for deletion. At the end of the frame, the deletion code will delete the arrow, completing the illusion that the arrow became the arrow shaft. However, if another collision with another enemy is detected before the arrow gets deleted, the collision code will spawn another arrow shaft, then mark the arrow for deletion again. But because the arrow has already been marked for deletion from the first collision, there is no noticeable effect to the arrow. Finally, at the end of the frame, the deletion code will detect that the arrow has been marked and it will delete the arrow. The observed result is that one arrow has duplicated into two arrow shafts. This phenomenon is called the arrow shaft dupe, one of the types of collision dupes known. As an additional example, a common collision dupe exploit called the pyramid dupe occurs because the player can whip a stack of gold bars to spawn three gold bars, then pick up the stack of gold bars before it gets deleted. The hired hand dupe is similar to these examples. It occurs when multiple players or hired hands pick up a single piece of gold before it gets deleted. If just two players or hired hands pick up a single piece of gold, the player obtains a value which is double the expected value of the gold. This means that with just one hired hand, any player could increase their score twofold. And with two hired hands, the player could increase their score threefold, and so on with the only limit being how many hired hands the player is willing to handle at once. In other words, 
Given two players of equal skill level, if one player uses the hired hand dupe with just one hired hand, that player will receive double the score that the other player will get. Faced with a possibility that runs which do not use the hired hand dupe will become immediately deprecated with this dupe, Moss rankings ban the use of the hired hand dupe in score runs. During the latter half of 2018, Splunky scientists such as Kirby703, Sam CV, Dan and I, among others, began to discover the inner workings of the render dupe, a glitch which was well documented but remained a mystery until that point. The discoveries led the community to reconsider their position on the hired hand dupe. After all, if the render dupe was allowed, then why was the hired hand dupe disallowed? And so, on September 26, 2018, Moss Rankings officially unbanned the hired hand dupe. On the surface, the hired hand dupe may seem similar to the render dupe, which also duplicates money because the player is able to pick up the same money item before the item is deleted. But there's actually several differences. First, the hired hand dupe occurs within a single frame, while the render dupe occurs because the money item isn't deleted across multiple frames. Second, the hired hand dupe occurs when multiple players touch a single money item, while the render dupe occurs when a single player touches multiple money items. This difference is important because this distinction implies that the render dupe and the hired hand dupe can be used simultaneously for an even greater duplication. And because the discovery of the render dupe allowed the hired hand dupe to become unbanned, it seemed only reasonable that strategies and techniques which use the hired hand dupe would be developed such that it can be used in conjunction with the render dupe. So how would you perform these techniques? First, because we will be using the render dupe with the hired hand dupe, it is important that you understand how to perform a render dupe. If you do not yet understand how to perform a render dupe, I recommend that you watch my video on the render dupe before continuing this video. I'll include a link in the description. And for those who need a refresher, here's a quick recap. First, destroy all noise items which can hurt the render dupe. Second, gather as many gems and gold as possible into a single pile. Third, align the pile, then pick up all the money items at once. The techniques which utilize both the hired hand dupe and the render dupe are performed similarly to these steps. The most common way, and the way that you'll find the most high ranking score runs, is as follows. First, find a hired hand. Most players would obtain their robot character from the mothership, as that is both a convenient and almost guaranteed method of obtaining a hired hand. However, a handful of players have also obtained the Cyclops character from the black market or obtained a hired hand through other means in the past. Second, keep the hired hand safe until you plan to use the hired hand for the dupe. This can be achieved in various ways. A common method of keeping the hired hand safe is digging a hole that the hired hand cannot jump out of. However, it may be more convenient to keep the hired hand safe using other exploits, such as the float spot, contra spot, or more dangerously, the brut spot. Third, when the player is ready to do, isolate a crush trap. Keep the crush trap in a safe corner or someplace where it will be both safe from destruction and be prevented from crushing you or other items. Fourth, perform the steps required to set up a render dupe. Remove noise items, gather gold and gems into a single pile, then align the stack with a push block. Be sure to place the pile of gems and gold on the bottom of the level, else it will be difficult to dupe with this technique. Now you are ready to dupe. Grab the hired hand from its safe spot then trigger the crush trap to move from its safe corner. Maneuver the crush trap so that it is at the bottom of the level. Then trigger the crush trap to move horizontally. Stand in front of the crush trap while holding the hired hand, and right before you pick up the stack of golden gems which you aligned earlier, drop the hired hand and crouch. If you timed it right, the hired hand should remain stunned for the duration of the time that you pick up the pile. After the pile is picked up, quickly pick up the hired hand again and jump out of the way of the crush trap so that you and the hired hand do not get crushed. At this point, the crush trap can either be destroyed 
or maneuver it back into its safe corner so that it can be reused for another duplication. If everything has gone well, you will receive approximately four times the expected value of the stack. There is another variation of this technique which is less consistent. If a crush trap cannot be isolated into a safe corner, either because you are not in the temple or because of other reasons, you can run into the stack, then right as you touch the stack throw the hired hand. If the timing is exact, then you can receive approximately four times the expected value. However, it is very difficult to get the timing exactly right, so you may receive only two times the expected value instead. Congratulations, you've just performed a hired hand dupe simultaneously with a rendered dupe. And that's everything that you need to know about the hired hand dupe. The Spelunker's guide document on collision dupes talks a bit more about other collision dupe exploits, so check it out if you have time. The link is in the description. Otherwise, if you have questions or comments, feel free to send a comment down in the comment sections below. Good luck and happy spelunking!